Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is actually make a frequency distribution or a frequency table, and we're going to use all those definitions that we came across, and we're going to use the purse snatcher data, the age of purse snatchers at a rest, to make one of these frequency tables. So first off, what we have to do is we have to start with the number of classes. So there's two things. We can decide on the number, or we can be told, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you this time that it's four. Most of the time, I'm going to tell you, so don't freak out about this. However, if you decide on a number, the normal number of classes is usually somewhere between five and ten classes, maybe a few more. Now, one couple, there are a couple of things that affect the number of classes that you use. Um, number one, the size of the sample. That's probably the most important. But again, another little piece of that is the um, range of the data as well. Um, so five to ten classes, the more data you have, the more classes you're going to have. But you can also look at that and go, hmm, well, I have a lot of data, but it's in a really short span. It's in a very small range. I might need a few more classes to kind of spread it out a little. Um, or, gosh, I've got a lot of data, but it's spread out over a great deal. Maybe I don't need as many classes as if it was spread out over a small range of data. Now, there's actually a formal way of finding um, an approximate number of classes to use, and that's called Sturgis Guideline. And the formula for that is 1 plus the log of n, which is the sample size, divided by the log of 2. And if you take a look at our data points, we have 10 data points. Our n is equal to 10 in the purse snatcher data right, right here. And you put in 10 for log here, the log of 10 divided by the log of 2. And that plus 1 is going to give you like 4.3. And we round it as we would any number, and it rounds down to 4. So I'm telling you 4. It's appropriate even according to Sturgis guideline. So we're going to use 4 classes. So we're going to move on here, and we're going to find out, okay, well, after we know what number of classes we want, what's the next thing we do? Okay, so the next thing that we're, we're going to do is we're going to find the class width. So the class width, um, what we do to find the class width is we have to know, first of all, um, the following things. We need ordered data, and we need to find the maximum and the minimum. The maximum is the largest data um, point, so largest um, point in the data, right? Largest data point. I'll just put large data and PT for point. And then we also need to know the minimum, and the minimum is the smallest data point. So small data point. Remember when I say data point, this means the smallest and largest um, numbers that are in your sample. And remember, we are talking about quantitative data. And then we also need to know the number of classes. And we have found out that we're going to use four, right, four classes to create this. That's what I told you, we'll be using four. So we're gonna use four classes and we're going to need the maximum and the minimum for the ordered data. And then we're going to calculate this class width by taking the maximum, subtracting the minimum, and dividing by the number of classes. So let's go back to our data and let's order it. Now this is how I usually order data. I go, okay, what's my smallest one? Okay, 16 is my smallest data point. And I cross it off so I know I've used it. And then what's my next one? I see a 17. So 17 is my next data point. I cross it off. And then what's my next smallest data point? Hmm, I see a 21, so 21. And I cross it off. What's my next smallest one? A 25 is the next smallest I see. So 25, and I cross it off. My next smallest I see is 29, and I cross it off. And then the next one I see is a 30. Now I see two 30s, and I do need to write both of those 30s down. So 30, 30. And then the next one I see, 39, right there. So 39, and I write it down. My next is 41. And finally, my last one here is 50. And then also, in addition to doing that, I always double check myself one more time. Remember that we set our sample size. And when we talk about sample size, remember we could use n. n was 10. So the other thing I do is I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Bingo. I've got them all. And now I can tell my maximum and my minimum scores. So this is my minimum, right? And min is how we abbreviate the minimum score. And this 50 is my max. 
So 16 and 50, those are the numbers that I need. So over here, we have that this is 16 and 50. So 50 for my maximum, 16 for my minimum. So those are the two from the ordered data. And our number of classes, we have our four. And so we're going to put this into the formula. So our formula is going to give us our width by taking the maximum, 50, subtracting our minimum, 16, and dividing by 4. So 50 minus 16 is 34, and divided by 4 is going to give us 8.5. 4 will go into 34, 8 times, 2 left over, 2 and a 0 make 20, 4 goes into 25 times. Now, we don't want 8.5, we round up. The rule is generally we round up, and we round up to the next inline value with the numeric type. So remember, our data are whole numbers, right? There's not 30.2 years. There's not a possibility of 25.7 years. It's only your 25 or your 26, your 30 or your 31, your 29 or your 30. So our data type is discrete, right? So what we have is discrete data going here. So it only makes sense that we would round up to the next whole number. So we use our round off rules. Eight and a half rounds up to nine. So this is going to be our class width. Now what do we do with the class width? Well, the, the, then we're going to use the class width to form the lower class limits and include one beyond what we need. So what we do is we take the minimum value, so we're gonna take 16, and we're going to add the class width, and that's going to give us the second limit here. So our class width is 9, so we have plus 9, so 16 plus 9. And 16 plus 9 is going to give us our second lower limit. So our second lower limit is 25. And then again, we'll add that lower class, or the class width plus 9, and that's going to give us our third lower class limit and that will be 34. And now we're going to add the class width again, and that's plus 9, and that's going to give us our fourth lower class limit. That will be 43. And I'm going to go one beyond. I have all four, right? So I'm going to go one beyond what I need. And you'll see why I'm going to do this in a little bit. And so plus 9 one more time, and then I'm going to go to 50. Two, and that's one beyond where I need to be. So this is my first lower class limit, my second lower class limit, my third lower class limit, and my fourth lower class limit. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to form the upper class limits by looking at the data type, so all discrete numbers again, right, and going one value down according to the numer numeric type, so one down by ones. And then I'm going to form the next successive uh, from the next successive upper class limit. So um, this is not upper. This should say lower class limit. So let me erase this so it doesn't confuse us. So this should say lower class limit. So what we're going to look at is that we would be doing 16 to something and then 25 to something, and then we would have 34 to something, and then 43 to something, and then 52 to something. So we're looking to fill in this number based upon this number here. So this number will be used to tell us what that is. So that's what this says, right? So we've decided we have discrete whole numbers. And so 25 is the next upper or next lower class limit. So we need to use that to make this upper limit. So it would make sense by the lower ones. So this is a five. So the next lower one is a four. So this would be 24. And then the same thing here, right? This next lower class limit being used to give us this one here. So this is 34, so that would make that 33. And this one is 43, so that would make this one 42. And this one is 52, which makes this one 51. And now you see why I went one beyond, so that I could get that 52. Now, by the way, this is the only way that you can get the lower, the upper limits. You can do the first one the way I just showed you, and then you can say, 
I'm going to add that class width, 9, to it, and look what you get. 24 plus 9 equals 33, and 33 plus 9, that's going to give you 42, and 42 plus 9, that's going to give you 51, and those are the other way you can get it, because remember, the class width is the distance from one lower limit to the next, or from one upper limit to the next, or from boundary to boundary, um, midpoint to midpoint, and we'll talk about all those things later. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to make counts of the number of data points in each class. So we have classes here, and we're going to go back to our data points and make the counts. So the first data, uh, the first class went from 16 to 24. So these here in 16 to 24. So there are three in the first class. And that, you can use tally marks and then change them to counts. This is a small data set, so we don't need to do that. Now, the next one, um, our next class, goes from, let me change colors here. Um, let me do bright pink. So there's a count of three in here. And then here, 25 to 33. So in 25 to 33 range, these are the numbers within that range, so that count's going to be 4. And then our next one is um, 33 uh, or 34 up to 42, so those are going to be in that one. And then our last class is 43, uh, 41, no, 40, I think, up to 51, so that's only one. So what we have is that in this 25 to 33 range, we saw 4, and in 34 to 42, we saw 2, and then in 43 to 51, we saw 1. So those are our counts, and so that's what we have in the counts of each of these. So the first has 3 in it. Our second class, we counted 4 within that range. The third class, we counted 3 two within its range, and the fourth class, we counted one within that range. And then we make sure these all add up. So this is three plus four is seven plus two is nine plus one is ten. And we want to make sure that that's equal to our n, which it is. So now we've done all of the things that are necessary to make a frequency distribution, a frequency table. And in the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to make that um, frequency table on paper.